has a need this morning? Amen. How many believe that God is here to meet our needs this morning? He will add something if we're ready, if our hearts are open. Can we bow in prayer this morning? Heavenly Father, as we've just taken this time just for the dedication, singing songs, but Lord, we're changing the order of the service, and Lord, we want to invite you to come in our midst. Lord, we know that the world around us is in turmoil, in chaos, in groanings, and travailings. But we know, Lord, in the midst of it all, you are still God. Nothing is out of control. So, Lord, we cast our cares upon you this morning. Father, we're here to be about the Father's business this morning. We're here, O oh Lord, to focus on you and on your promises and to be built up. Even as it was already prayed this morning, Lord, we're here to benefit from this gathering. So, Lord, I give myself to you. We as a people give ourselves to you. And we're asking you that you will take charge of this service. Lord, may your anointing rest upon us. May your spirit be upon us. Lord, we recognize we're spirit beings this morning. Our words, our reactions, our hearts, our amens, they all create an atmosphere. It's not just in the music, but it's in the service. Lord, we recognize the Holy Spirit responds to that. Lord, and we want to be participators this morning. Therefore, we ask you, Lord, abide in us, dwell among us, walk up and down the aisles. Quicken us, Lord, this morning, for we need you in the hour we live in. Remember our brother Len this morning. We commit him into your hands, Lord. We also pray this morning that you remember the Parazox and our brother Joe in particular. Lord, for our sister Jeanette Patrick and for the Wackelchucks and for each and every one, Lord, that has suffered, the Steves, we remember them all. Lord, and across the lands, we remember our brother Dixon. We thank you for his life. And we pray, O oh Lord, the work that is written, the work that was done, that was attributed, that he was a part of, Lord, we thank you for it. Lord, we ask as well for Brother Vin Dial and the family, and Lord, all around the world, we are an army. We recognize more and more we can't do this alone. But we need God in every member, God in every part of the body. Everyone brings, everyone contributes. Lord, I pray that you would be our portion this morning. Dwell in your people this morning. Be in your word. Quicken us, we ask. Thank you for everything. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you to the musicians. Thank you, Brother Dan. I, I'm going to invite you to turn to the book of Genesis chapter 17. While you're turning, I'm just going to make a comment or two. We had our young people's service on Friday, the first of the young people's services, and uh, thank our brother Andrew for leading that and also for giving him inspiration. Brother Andrew had three young men come and speak and give testimony based on some of the things he'd asked for, and I, I tell you what, I was watching and I was blessed by each, what each and every one of these young men brought, so our brother Mark Perizok and Brother Isaac Whitmire, Brother Ethan, they all brought something, and I believe those of you that were listening, I don't know about you, but I am thankful for what God is doing in the young people. And I believe there's more. <laughs> so I, I was grateful for that, and I, I, sure, I sure appreciated that. And tonight we also have a young brother going to speak, Brother John Perizok. So we're looking forward to that. You be in prayer for that. Uh, we also have a couple of young men here from Calgary, Brother Philip and Brother Stephen Callahan. God bless you. Nice to have you here. We've known the family for many years, and it's really nice to see, see them and to have them here this weekend with us. And if I can also make one quick announcement, Lord willing, next weekend we want to start Sunday school. Our Sunday school teachers have been preparing, so I just have, we just have a short meeting with the Sunday school teachers after the service if we can. Are we ready? You're ready. I wasn't ready. Now I'm ready. 
Okay, Genesis chapter 17. Let's just take this, read, read a few verses here. And when Abraham was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the Almighty God, walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee, and I will multiply thee exceedingly. Now remember, these are the eternal words of God. What he started in Abraham back then continues to this very day, the very hour we live in right now. And I will make my covenant between me and thee, and I will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abraham, Abraham fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying... Now, remember, this is after 24 years of walking with God. But now God is doing something in Abraham that is confirming his covenant. Verse 4, and as for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called church, but bride. Sorry, I inserted that. You all knew that. But I'm saying this is typing something. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abraham, but thy name shall be called Abraham. The part that was inserted was a part of God's name. El, God breathing something into him. Putting something into him that was going to meet the challenge of the hour. Something God would recognize. And he says, but your name shall be called Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful. And I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee. Now this is not just history. This is the ongoing of Abraham's seed, both natural and spiritual. And he said, and I will make my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. Now, did God fulfill the natural? Did he give, bring them into Canaan? Did he take them out of Egypt? Did he bring them into Canaan? I think we all can say, Amen. Amen. God fulfills his word. Now, our promise is not natural geography. But our promise is a spiritual land. And I believe the same God that watched over Abraham is watching over his seed. And he's bringing us into that land. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant therefore, thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. This is my covenant which you shall keep. Between me and you and thy seed after thee, every man child among you shall be circumcised. And you shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin. It shall be a token of the covenant between me and you. Now, this is a natural token. We have a spiritual token. And he that is eight days among you, uh, old shall be circumcised among you. Every man child in their, your generations, he that is born in the house or bought with money of any st stranger which is not of thy seed, he that is born in thy house and he that is bought with thy money must needs be circumcised. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And the uncircumcised man man-child whose flesh of the foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He hath broken my covenant. 
God bless his word. You may have your seats this morning. I'm going to follow through on the thought that we started last week, and that is on the prevailing seed. This will be part three. It won't be the last one. But I'm going to speak this morning on the natural types, the spiritual. Now, the promises were to Abraham and to his seed. I want to move quickly. I feel like I have some hay on my fork, but I won't. I, I will do my best to deliver what God has put on my heart. If you are here this morning, there's, you're a three-part being. There is your flesh, and your flesh you may have had to drag to church. Now, we were just speaking of this in the back office. In every church, there's three kinds of believers. I could go a step further and say, in every one of us is three kinds of believers. Your flesh is not a believer. Let me just say it that way. Your spirit, which is the battlefield, is the make-believer. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. But inside of you is your soul that is the believer. And whatever you give yourself to, that's what's going to have the preeminence this morning. If you're going to lean on the flesh and say, ah, uh, this or that, that, that'll be your focus, that'll be your portion. If you're going to just dwell in your mind and go places, that'll be your portion. But if your soul, which is hungry for God this morning, can pull, then God will feed you and you will begin to be an overcomer. You will prevail. So, let's, let's move forward. Now, the promise here is to Abraham and to his seed. Now, Abraham's walk was a process. It started in Genesis chapter 12 when, when God, and you could call that his justification. And I still believe today that there is a justification. I believe there is a sanctification. I believe there is a baptism of the Holy Ghost. And, and you could say Genesis 12 was justification. You can go to Genesis 15 and say that was Abraham's sanctification. But under Genesis 17, Abraham received something in him that was not of himself. Something that God would recognize. Something that God would say, this is a man who was obedient, who died out. I will put my seal on him. This is my covenant. And that is what the baptism of the Holy Ghost is today. And, 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 and there's many things that goes with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And, 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 a, and a lady came to Brother Branham once and said, and he would, he would just say, what? She says, how do I know if I've got it? He said, what were your desires before and what are they now? What were you before and what are you now? It's not about religious terminology. It's not about fitting a certain quote or fitting a certain thing. There's an actual change in your being. It changes your desires. It changes your attitudes. It causes you when you go get pulled this way or that way. It always brings you back. It's your North Star. It's your absolute. It's the very thing that we need in the day and the hour we live in. Say, Brother Ed, you're preaching this more and more. I am convinced that we need this in every life. Friends, Satan loves it. When you take an organization and say, this is what we believe, and all the people have to do is walk in under that mandate or platform, he loves that. Because everybody has a security in that. That's not our security this morning. It is not being on the... Membership of End Time Message Tabernacle. It's not that you're under a, a, a godly ministry. It's not that you have tapes in your home. But the ultimate of your faith is that God dwells in you and he expresses himself in you. That ought to be what you press towards all the time. Okay, let's back up now. So, Genesis 12 Abraham's beginning. God called him. We don't know much about him before that. But it was God that chose him. It was God that would tell Abraham, I chose you, I called you, I blessed you. Furthermore, whoever blesses you will be blessed. Whoever curses you will be cursed. Now if you actually measure that, the Lord or I is used five times. 
There's nothing said of Abraham in all of that. It's what God did. Friends, it's not what we did. It's not, if, if, Brother Mark, I appreciate your prayer this morning. It's not, the further you go on in your life, you recognize that wasn't me that broke from my friends. That wasn't me that lived such a holy life. That was God in me, calling me, and he's still working through me. He's bringing me to something. It was God. If, if, the further you go along, you, you, you'll see this. And I say this, it makes you love him more. It makes you more dependent on him. It makes you to the point where I can do nothing except I have him. No matter how long you've been around, we need him this morning. So he would say, and the only thing Abraham had to do was walk in faith. Not on something he could do, but in faith for what God said he was going to do. So when Abraham walked in faith, and, and, and I say this, it was a process. God knew what was in Abraham. But Abraham didn't know what was in Abraham. And so everything that happened was God unfolding or revealing himself to Abraham in a greater way. And it was allowing Abraham to see it's not me, it's the God that called me, that dwells in me. He alone is my righteousness. So all God asked for was to separate and to follow him, walk in faith. Now, I'm going to just take a, a couple of key points. I, I wish I could expound this whole story. I never could, and, and it's not up to me if I, if I bring it, but may God quicken the points that we're doing. And I'm going to just, I, I, I want to just preach irregardless of what politics says, of what we think we, we are, what the age says. You know, that's the message we've received. That's the message we need to be influenced by. That's the message that's still good today. So I'm going to take a little thought, and Brother Brandon would take different parts of this, is, is just the first part of the service. God demands total separation from unbelief. This is an age where there is huge pressure to conform. There's huge pressure to be popular so that everybody on social media can see I'm a good guy or I'm a good gal. That's a huge pressure. It's all superficial. And I say there's a huge pressure to conform. There's a huge pressure to be in the world and to go along. And, and these pressures are only increasing. If, if you don't conform with politics or their ideas or their things, these pressures will only increase. And, and we, we, we need to really put the blinders on. We need to focus on what God wants us to do, not on what the rest of the world is doing, not on what the church world is doing, not even what sometimes others around the message are doing. We need to focus on what he makes real to us. So this, this may not be the popular part of a service, but I, I, don't, I don't care. This is the message. It's an age of mixing. So first of all, as, 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 as long as you're, the world is in your heart, in 1 John it would say, if you love the things of the world, the love of God is not there. Now that, that doesn't mean you can't go out and go to a game or, or do something. But if you're living for that, if you're living for sports, if you're living for cars or fashion, if you're living for these things, if that's all you see, that's the love of the world. You know, we were not in the world to use and abuse the fashion thereof, but we're here for a short time. And so somewhere there needs to be something to say, thank you, Lord, that I have this little hobby, this little thing I can do. But this is not my end goal. I, I'm so thankful. I, I used to be into sports, and I loved it. And, and I would also get into things. And if I'm not careful, that pull can get back on me. And that's where I, I believe God has allowed me to wean myself off of that more and more. Do I, do I know who scored? Or Yeah, I, sometimes I, I, I don't want to follow every detail. I don't know every stat. I, I don't know everything. I mean, when you get that involved, just check yourself. Say, Lord, is this, is this am I, 
is, is this what I'm giving to myself starting to become too strong and pulling me? That's a good question. If there's a question, Brother Man would say, then leave it alone. Okay? I, I, I'm just, I, I want to move forward. I'm just saying a few things. Let's just quickly go. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. There's, there's, there's first of all the world around us that we need to separate from. And Brother Man would say the major sin of the church in this last day is worldliness. Now worldliness shows up in fashion, it shows up in conversation, it shows up in what you watch and what you look at. That's worldliness. But there's also, and, and it's not just about don't do, don't do this, uh, it's about what you love to do sometimes displaces the world around you. And if you've ever been in the presence of God and you've ever experienced that, there's something you can't get away from. And you say, give me more of Jesus this morning. Give me more of you, Lord. Turn my eyes away. Brother Dan, I think you sang three of the songs I had on my list already. Turn my eyes on Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Let's just read verse 16. This is God's, God's attitude towards the world and sin has never changed. And he says, what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Now that's God's choosing. Now what do we have to do? Verse 17. Wherefore, Come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. That is still the word of God today. Jump down to chapter 7, verse 1. Now, I'm, I'm using this because... This isn't just about theory, it's pie in the sky. The, the, the underlying topic here is the prevailing seed. How are you going to overcome? How does the rubber meet the road? It's not just good enough to show up in church one or two times a week or three times a week and say, I've got it. It's actually got to be employed on a daily level. It's got to happen in your thought life. It's got to happen in, in every aspect of our lives. We're going home. And we want to go home. We don't want to be here. And the walls are closing in on us. Thank God for that because we were getting too comfortable here. And it's time to go home. Chapter 7, verse 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Now, separating ourselves from all unbelief. It's huge pressure to conform. Huge pressure. The, the things that are happening in the world right now. I, I, I'm, I'm going to just insert this here because we have to recognize, and Brother Brandon would make this statement. He said, your eternal destination is not based on what you see or what you hear. Now, so when the prime minister, the premier stands up and they say there's new restrictions, don't beat at them. That, that's not going to help you to eternal life. But you need to catch the spirit behind things. So Brother Adam would say, our eternal destination is not based on what you see or you hear, but on your discernment of what you see or hear. And so we need to have discernment of what's going on around us. Yes, there's agendas around us. But our battle is not in the flesh. Paul would say in Ephesians 6, we battle not against those things, but against spirits and demons and principalities. I'll, I'll tell you what, 
in Abraham's day, when he came and he said to his, his father, and he said to his family and his kindred, I'm pulling up roots. I'm moving. I'll tell you what. It was, it was a war based on revelation. It was a war based on revelation in Genesis chapter 4 between Cain and Abel. When Cain didn't see, Cain looked at the natural, but he couldn't see what Abel saw. Revelation starts a spiritual war. So this is not just at the prophetic level. This is at our level. The day you come, you can have friends in the world. They they pat you on the back. You're a good guy. You're this, you're this. But the day you confess Jesus Christ and I'm going to give my life, it's like the plague has hit you. Why? It's spiritual warfare. That's what happens every day of our lives. So it's not the people, it's spirits. So I'm saying this, the natural types, the spiritual. Keep this in your mind as we move forward. The the things that we see in our age. Why would Brother Branham be so hard against television? Now, we don't have to preach against television. Because very few have just the TV anymore with the rabbit ears. I, I, no, nobody has that anymore. I don't think you can get a signal on that anymore. But everyone has a device. There's something that you can tap into. So before you so smug and so secure, thank God I don't have a television. Mm. Mm. But are you caught with the spirit of television? I, I, I'm going I'm to bring this right to where every one of us needs it. I need it, you need it, we all need it. The spirit that is upon the world is to get your attention. That's why YouTube and TikTok and social media, it's there to grab your attention. And you open up to a little bit of it and it opens up to more, to more before you can't live without it and you have a a nation full of neurotics. Go and book a hotel room. No Wi-Fi. Hey, I'm not taking that place. I had a client who, he was, he was, uh, he was raised in the Northwest Territories. His wife comes from Scandinavia. They're outdoors type people. They're Christians. Nominal church here. And they told me, Ed, if you ever need a retreat, we'll take you up. We have an island on Great Bear Lake. We fly in. We have our own plane. We have no power. We have no electricity. No, you want to get away? It's perfect. And I actually had to think about that. And I said, shaking already. No. <laughs> I, I just say this, friends. How dependent have we become? So the spirit is what we got to catch. The voice is behind it. The voice of education. The voice of education in Noah's day, it was a very scientific age, and God picked a farmer to bring a message. And in this day, if you're not careful, you'll go to school, they'll teach you things, and you'll look at the message and say, Brother Brad, he doesn't even pronounce his words right. But I'll tell you what, the spiritual seed inside will catch that that is God speaking to me. It's not on the level of education. And there's a spirit that's crept into the message to try to explain things. Listen, we will never explain faith. And sometimes they want to engage you in, in debate and in conversation. You know the best way to, to beat that devil off is ignore him. Oh, you guys, you, how, how come Brother Brown did this? I said, no, I'm just believing God. All I know is that whenever anyone came before that prophet and they're under discernment with the angel of the Lord standing there, nobody ever dared tell Brother Branham face to face, that was wrong. What you said was wrong. You will not find that. But after he came, those voices rose up. Those are the voices around the message. Those are the voices we have to withstand and we have to put down. They are not a part of my faith. They're not a part of my walk. I'm not mixing those things. Education. Politics. Listen, 
Don't get upset at the prime minister or the premier. Every nation in the world is governed by one. You don't know who it is? Go to Matthew chapter 4 when, when, when the devil comes to Jesus and he says, all the kingdoms of the world are mine. If you bow down to worship, I'll give them to you. Now who's in charge? So before you get upset at politics, at regulations, at vaccines, catch the spirit. You're not going to win this by flesh and blood battle. This is a spiritual battle. It is not won on that level. If you, if you resort to that level, you're going to fall somewhere. Listen, I'll, I'll go a bit further. You cannot even the voice of the church. I'm going to have to save some of this because it, it'll, it'll go into service next weekend. But Let me read a few things Brother Branham said. Separate yourself. This is the unconditional covenant God made with his people. Separate. This is what Abraham went through. This is what Abraham's seed goes through. Separate yourself from your kindreds, from your peoples. Separate from your associates. Separate from your habits. Separate from everything and come out and stand alone for God. That's what the first man that was called by election, that's where the last man's called to do the same thing. Come out from them, be you separate, and then I'll bless you. If any of you have a chance, listen to the little testimony that Brother Mark Perizok gave. It was a, it was a wonderful testimony. And it's about a, a man who was very honest and saying, I always had some little roots, some, but when the roots dealt with, God comes on the scene. We thank God for that. God bless you for being so transparent, Brother Mark. God bless all those brothers, Brother Isaac, Brother Ethan, everyone. I really enjoyed it. So he would say this, separate yourself from the things of the world. Abraham, God's voice spoke to him, said, separate yourself. Isn't it strange God wants us to separate? Today the world wants mixers. You know, they, they used to have these social mixing events in business. You know, meet different people, meet different people. You know, that, that, that can actually happen in a religious level too. I, I, I don't want to get into it, but completely today I'll, I'll deal with it more next week. But that, that's what happened when Israel went down to Moab. When there was a prophet who was just as, uh, if I can call it, just as fundamental as Moses, actually had the same anointing on Mo as it was on Moses, but yet he was off. He was not a word prophet. And that was Balaam. And the Bible talks about the way of Balaam, the error of Balaam, and then the doctrine of Balaam. So you be careful where you go. I'll tell you what, learn to trust the inside voice that God speaks to you. And Brother Man would say, stay with your pastor. He's ordained to bring you through. Many people don't have a pastor anymore. They, they just have this place, they, this place. But I'll tell you what, you need to have a home base. You need to have a place where God can speak to you, where you pray and, and the man himself isn't even in control. It's God using the vessel. That's not easy for somebody to say to their own church, to the, the, the people that he's called to. Listen to what Brother Adam says. God's voice separate. Today the world wants mixers. The world says... We don't want that old pastor. He's an old fogey. He is not believing in letting us do this or that. We want a young fellow who's a mixer. Now, these are spirits that come into a church. If we're not careful now that you might not say these same words, I want something where it's leading edge, cutting edge of the message. And you start to pursue that. I'll tell you what. The good old-fashioned gospel will get you ready. If God wants to give you something, he'll give it to you. Be careful that we're not pursuing there, here, there, everywhere. I'm not against listening or streaming. I, I, I enjoy it myself. But you can't use that as a replacement for what God has ordained. Brother Ed, I, I don't, you're, you're just telling it awfully straight. Don't you know we're in 2021? Exactly. This message still works.
the people say, this is spirits. You know, you, you talk about, there, there's, there's always a right, uh, one leaning this way. Nicolaitanism, is, uh, there is a part where you can have an overlord. Somebody dictates over the people. But it also works the other way. Where people dictate what the man wants. Listen, I'm not here. We're not here just to play politics. We're here for him. We're here to straight true to the message. We're here to follow the Bible. The Bible order. We're here to give ourselves, to pray. Lord, you come in our midst. You lead us. You direct us. God wants separators. Many of you in selecting your ministers to come to the pulpit, you select the young fellow that's come to school. He's smart. He's witty. A social mixer. God doesn't want a mixer. He wants a separator, and sometimes you choose him because a lot of times he's very smooth. God doesn't choose men like that. Sorry if this is getting quiet, but I'm just saying, this is washing us. Because sometimes we start to lean some way. Sometimes we think, oh, this is the only man that can feed my soul. No, I'll tell you what, I am thankful for every God-called gift, but not one of them is my absolute. My absolute is the Word of God. My absolute is the message of the hour. Some people will stream services all week, but never pick up a tape. I think we need to pick up a tape once in a while. I think we need to hear the Word of God once in a while. Brother Ed, why are you, what's, I didn't come to church to hear that this morning. I'll tell you what, your soul needs it. Your body needs it. Your flesh needs it. I need it. If, we, if Brother Branham was here, or if we sat in his meetings, put yourself, how would you have reacted? Would you have been like some, ah, oh, man, like, why is he an old fogey? Or would you have said, thank God for speaking to me? He's the same God today. I'm not angry. Passionate. Passionate. I'm fighting against spirits that would overtake us, that would overtake me, you. Let's keep the devil out. Let's let God have first place. Now here, Brother Adam goes a step further. You think I'm, I'm finished? No, I'm not off that yet. Here. Now you call your new pastor at, you, your new pastor at the conference. You vote for some little jelly bean. Excuse that expression. <laughs> I had to laugh last time. We were in the office and I asked Brother Max, do you want a headset? He said, no, no, I can't take it. And he says, oh, you use these, yeah? And I was just remembering the meetings, Brother Ron Spencer. They couldn't get his headset to work. So he picked this thing up. He said, oh, I always liked lollipops. <laughs> Only Brother Ron. Listen, he says, you let some jelly bean, some little fellow that's a mixer, he takes the kids swimming, all the kids swimming, he has sociable parties, he has dinners in the basement. I'll tell you what, if the gospel becomes entertainment for the flesh, count me out. That is not the good old-fashioned gospel. That is not what Brother Branham bled for. He is here for us to hear the, un, uh, the, 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 the unfailing body word of Christ. The word that shapes and cuts. It still needs to do that today. It still needs to do that for our youth. It still needs to do it for us who are older. It still has to be preached. Oh, he always lets us out early. Wow, I've never been accused of that. He says, he doesn't speak over 20 minutes just so we can see the new Molly Dolly on television. You didn't even know these words existed, did you? Some of you are laughing because you know they existed. You're betraying your age. I can see the smile under your face, or mask. <laughs> God doesn't want mixers. He calls for separators. The Holy Ghost called for Paul and Barnabas to be separated, but you want some fellow that looks like a Hollywood movie star. I won't mention the man's name in Houston in the big, he's got a super smile that attracts all the celebrities. Or you want somebody that has locks like a girl and acts the same way. You know, a lot of these people, they have a collar turned around, a frock tail coat, oh, you know what I mean. Anyway. 
I say in everywhere you and I go, we are taught, the nation is taught. It's changed in politics that it's style over substance. And Brother Branham would say, you can put an Abraham Lincoln in every place, every county, everywhere, and he says, it won't make a difference anymore. The nation's gone. They, you know, they, they'll take the one that's got the best image, and they'll overlook a lot of the agendas that are under that person. And I'm not here pre preaching politics. I'm just saying, that's the spirit that we see. And sometimes we find ourselves arguing for it. I don't like the way this guy looks. He, he doesn't present himself as good. And, what are, we what are we looking at? I'll tell you, it's, there's three exoduses here. The first exodus was a natural people out of a natural land. That was, Abraham was the father of that, but it was Israel out of Egypt. But Abraham went through it first. Then it was a spiritual people out of a natural people. Paul would come in, and he would speak against the temple. He would speak against the sacrifices. Now, he, he, it was preaching that which was coming. But I'll tell you what, the Jews that were there, this was like, I mean, could you imagine the service when, when Paul came and I said, this temple is only a type. Jesus said, destroy it. That's not the temple. We're come to Mount Zion. And there was people that received what he said. But there was other people that blew a gasket. He's against us. Don't think that those spirits aren't around here. You're, 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 no, we're, we're, we ought to be spiritual. Looking at where God's leading us. And in this last day, he's calling a, a, a bride out of a church, a, a, a spiritual bride out of a church. And each age, it requires faith in something you cannot see, but something that's on the inside man that you give yourself to. Okay, I, I hope we have a few more amens. Are, 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 do you believe God has taken you out? Do you want to keep going? I don't want to stop here. I want to keep moving. <laughs> Let me just read one or two more, and then I, I need to move. Oh, my, our time is going. Brother Ram says this. I'm old-fashioned enough not to believe in this Hollywood revivalism. I like the old-fashioned, backwoods, sky-blue, sin-killing religion that doesn't whitewash but washes white. I need, we need to get back to good old St. Paul's revival and the Bible Holy Ghost, not a supper room but an upper room. God, man chooses after the eye. God chooses the heart. One time there was a man who was going to be anointed for a king to take Saul's place. And, and even the prophet, Samuel, he looked at all those, this, the tallest, the oldest, oh, he's the one. He looks at those things. This is a prophet. I, I need to just say something. Brother Max came here, and Brother Max came here, and sometimes I'd hear him talk, and he, I can say this, he's not here today, he might not listen to the podcast, I'm hoping I'll whisper quiet. And then I'd listen to the Irish accent, and I'd have a tough time with the Ghanaian mixed in, and, 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 I'm, I'm, and I, I, could, I could see, I could hear him pray, this, this is a guy who's got a hold of God. But it was actually Brother Harold that said, you've got a call on your life. Now, that takes somebody who's spirit-led to see those things. And if you're not careful, you allow the outside reasoning to overtake what God wants to do. So before we, remember, this was Samuel. He did the same thing. Samuel, he thought, oh, surely this is the man. He's seven foot tall. Bring him out. And, and God says, he's not the one. All of the sons. Don't you have one? Like, you have one more? Yeah, he's just, if he's ruddy, he's nothing. And God said, that's the one. So don't look with the eye. Your eye will deceive you. Even in religious realms. Listen, I, I say this. You're never going to defeat the devil with science. We need discernment. And discernment isn't just a gift. 
Discernment comes from being in the Word and in prayer. If you're in the Word and in prayer, you'll see things a lot quicker than a lot of other people will. You'll pick up on spirits in school, spirits that get on your kids when they come home. You'll pick up all those things if you're in the Word. And I say this, it's not just the gift, it's not just the pastors, not just the ministers, it's not just the deacons, it's every one of us. Discernment will keep you from the wrong kind of friend. Stay in the word, stay in the spirit of God. i got to move along here. Our our time is just slipping away. So, Romans chapter 12, verse 1, let's just read this quickly. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Okay, so Satan, I, I've, I, I just asked myself this question the other day. We've seen what Satan can do when he gets a vessel yielded unto him. What can God do when he gets a vessel yielded unto him? You see what that demon maniac did at Portland, Oregon? That man worshipped that spirit, and you see what he, the power that he had. But there was also a man who wasn't nearly as big, who was behind the pulpit, who was yielded to God, and who kept the love of God in his heart. And when that man came up, he didn't fight him with flesh and blood. He was a boxer, but that wasn't what he used. When he met the bull, he didn't, he reached for his holster, but he forgot the gun. So your first reaction is not the right reaction sometimes. It's it's leaning on the Spirit of God. We're moving higher. We need to lean on God more. We need to lean not on our thinking, but on God's thinking. And it was the love of God, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll do this in another service. I was out for a walk yesterday, and my wife and I, we were walking, and, and I'd often stop and make a few notes, because as I'm out, and I'm walking, I'm clear, and, and thoughts are coming to me. And this was one of the thoughts that came to me, and, and just, just, just walking along. In Pick Up Your Pen and Write, Brother Bram says, the bride knows what he wants done with the Word. Some people will take the Word and use it as a sledgehammer. They will hammer somebody with it. They will get a religious spirit on them. And they will use it that way. And, and, and I'm, I'm saying this for every one of us. This is not just ministers. This is in our homes. You can beat down your kids with the word. Now, or you can present the word with thoughts of redemption in mind. You can present the word with the thought of, I could say this, but I'm going to restrain myself. My flesh wants to scream with all that's in me, change, buckle up. But the spirit in me is saying, just drop a seed. And be in love with that person. Because that's what Brother Branham did when he overcame the demon maniac that came up to him. He says, that poor man. He didn't, (laughs) I've been training for this. Take my jacket off, take my tie off. and no. I felt sorry for him. And he says, and then I found myself saying. In other words, it didn't come from him. I found myself saying, Satan, come out of the man. And he fell at my feet. But first he he talked to those two policemen that were there. They could have helped him. This isn't a flesh and blood affair. This is a spiritual affair. We are dealing with spirits, friends like we've never dealt with before. I've encountered them like I've never encountered them before. And I'm sure you have. I went back to my notes because there's a subject I'm going to pick up. And it was the first subject that I, the Lord led me to at the beginning of the year about the warfare. And we are in a warfare. And I've been in a warfare. And I know there's some of you that have been in warfare. And it's even right in our homes. But I'll tell you, we need the Spirit of God and to trust Him like never before. Never before. Brother Branham will... Ah, i, I got to come to this one step at a time. 
Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So, it's got to enter your thought life. When you walk down the street, you talk about an age of perversion. Every woman that dresses, I I didn't pull the quote, he said, Satan knows enough not to strip the woman bare, but just to dress her enough to entice, to draw you in. And you're not affected if you don't take the look, if you don't take the step, if you got something inside of you. Let's, let's, let's be honest. We're all in the flesh. We've all looked the wrong way. We've all been caught at some point in time. But I'm saying this, it starts with your thought life. And Brother Branham himself put a cross in his car. Lord, when someone comes, let me look at that cross. So how do we prevail? How do we overcome? It's not how long we make the battle linger. It's cutting it off before it has a chance. I, I had, uh, you know, I, I've, I've thought of this often. Sometimes you... You, get an e, you, you, get, you see a website and they want you to sign in to, to get a, an offer. Once you sign in and give your email, you keep getting emails. And, and I was looking at it and I'm on my phone and I got emails from this company and that company. I don't want these emails. I can delete them every day if I want. But it takes me that much time every day. Or I can put a block sender sign out and it doesn't even hit me anymore. Why do we want to allow him to bombard bombard me and and hit me with this and hit me? Uh, You want to be a real overcomer? Start putting the blocks up. Start putting the places up. And I've looked at time that I've wasted on, on, and I, I, hey, everybody needs a little downtime. Brother Branham wasn't always in the word and spiritual and thou and thy art this. No, no. He was an average man who wanted to go hunting, who needed a release, who needed things. We all need that. But those things can easily drift. Oh, let's go on a vacation. And oh, look at this hotel room. And they got Wi-Fi. And they got three TVs. And they got cable. And channels. Wow, let's, I'm going to watch this. And all of a sudden you're watching all kinds of things. There's places we've gone to. I thank God. My wife and I, and we haven't even turned it on. Sometimes I have, sometimes not. I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm being honest. We're all human. But there's something inside of us that God has given. And how, it, it's the law of displacement. You know, I, I think I used this before, but Socrates, he, he was a scientist. He was, he was drawing a bath of water. He filled his tub to the top, and he gets into the tub, and all this water spills out. How did that happen? And he comes on a scientific formula. The body mass I put into this tub got displaced. What you put into the Word will displace the world around you. Sometimes we just use buzzwords. Oh, I'm in the message. I'm in the third pull. I'm, I'm in this. Do you know what the third pull is? Do You know, I, I had a... Uh, no, I'm just, I'm just off talking. I'm just off my notes here. I, uh, I had a phone that went in the toilet, so to speak. Hit the water. It was not good anymore. I had to get a new phone. I tried to get my contacts over, and I realized I don't even know half these people's numbers because now I got the new phone. They got my contact. The numbers come out. I said, who's that? I realized I had 947 contacts in my phone. And, and it's so easy to hit, and you can use your voice. Call Sandy. Call home, call Caleb, call Ethan. And, and what's their phone? And you can easily say, we're in the third pull. Uh, well, what does that mean? What's the number? Well, what, like, how does that fit in a word? You know what, friends? We need to get into the word. We need to read our Bibles. We can't just use phrases and buzzwords. We got to get into it. Displace it. Displace the world around you. Anyway, thankfully, I got all the contacts over now, or at least two-thirds of them, 
and I can see who's calling. And if I didn't get back to you in the last couple weeks or so, it's because I didn't know what the number was or whatever, I apologize. <laughs> anyway, I'm thankful for call display. I'm thankful for attributing something. But I, I'm saying that as far as the word goes, you need to be in here, in your Bible. You need to be in the message. Don't just use a, a phrase. That's not going to hold you in this day. I got to move on. I really got to move on here. It's a process. Abraham's process was to separate. Listen, let me just go back quickly. I'll read these scriptures. It's better if I read sometimes. Genesis chapter 11. Genesis chapter 11. This is just, you don't read a lot of this after God calls Abraham in Genesis chapter 12 when he tells him to get out and depart and to separate. But in, in chapter 11, Genesis chapter 11 verse, I don't know if I gave you this, Brother Mark, just bear with me if I didn't. Verse 31, and Terah took Abraham his son and Lot the son of Haran, his son's son, and Sarah his daughter-in-law, the son, his son Abraham's wife, and they went forth unto the Ur of the Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan, and they came to Haran, and they dwelt there. And Brother Branham would talk, God called Abraham, but Abraham took along his father. Now there's nothing wrong with taking along your father. That would be a good thing. But this is a spiritual type so the fa your father in this day could be your denomination, could be your denominational ideas, could be your conception, your upbringing. This is what I was raised under. You need to separate from all of that and be washed by the water of the word. You need to allow a full washing. So that was as long as Abraham walked not in full obedience, God didn't reveal more. But once he separated, God revealed more. God is a God who loves it when we walk by faith, not by sight. It's not what I can see. It's not what I can prove. But it's by faith and obedience to God. Sometimes God speaks to you. You're watching too much of this. You're playing too much of this. And you know what? You think, I want God to help me, to deliver me. Well, start by putting some things off. Start by doing those things. And you watch God come on the scene for you. So that was one thing. The next thing was Lot. I, I gotta, let's just jump over to... Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12, verse 5. And Abraham took Sarah, his son, and Lot, his brother's wife, or sorry, his brother's son, and all their substance that they had gathered, and all the souls that they had gotten in Haran. And they went forth to go into the land of Canaan. Into the land of Canaan they came. So God didn't call Lot. Abraham called Lot. Lot maybe wanted to tag along. But as Brother Ram would say, it was like a fly in the ointment the whole time. It, it was always something sticky that just didn't go. Oh, who will go with me to my father's house? Let everybody that has the desire to see the father, not just to be a part of the crowd, not just to be a part of the social gathering, but I want to be a part of what God is doing. Let that be in my heart. So now in, in chapter 13, verse 5, if we can go to that. Finally they came, they're there, they're in a place. And Lot also went with Abraham, had flocks, herds, and tents, and the land was not able to bear them, so they might dwell together. If you have a chance, listen to the message, seed is not air with the shuck. This will go into where we're going next week a little bit. He says, their substance was so great, they could not dwell together. There was strife among them. Let me pause for a moment. We, we see where we're living. There has been wheat planted. There's been tares planted. They're coming to harvest. The separating time is coming. You need to be focused. You need to know where you're going. Now he says, The land was not able to bear them that they might dwell together. There was strife, verse 7, between the herdsmen. And Abraham said to Lot, Now first of all, let's look at Abraham's attitude. Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee. Is not the whole land before us? Now look, look at Abraham. He didn't, he didn't say, this is my turf. Get off. No, Abraham, he knew it was all his. <laughs> and he says, you want to go that way? Go that way. You want to go that way? Go that way. I'll take the other way. And, and so Abraham, and, and here's the faith, I believe, that's in the believer. No matter what way we go, 
The covenant is in us. It's not in a certain place. It's in me. And if I go this way, and I'm led of God to go that way, and I'm separating myself for God, He'll go with me. He'll bless me. He'll take care of me. And if I go that way, He'll take care of me there too. Now heaven comes to earth. Now it's coming to a time when it's not what God says out there. It's what the bride is saying down here. It's what's in her. It's what God is doing in a people today. And I'll say this. God's watching. He's training us. So Abraham. But now let's just look at Lot for a minute. Verse 10. And Lot lifted up his eyes and he beheld all the plain of Jordan. And it was well watered everywhere. Before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as the garden of the Lord unto the land of Egypt, as thou comest to Zor. And Lot chose all the plain of Jordan. Lot journeyed east. They separated themselves from one another. Now, I, I won't have time to go through all the scriptures. Lot, he made a choice. And I... I, I, I'm gonna, you can't go by natural feelings. You can't go by science. You can't go by reasoning. You can't go by what you see with your eyes. And Brother Branham brings it to this. He says, watch how close it gets to that razor edge now between right and wrong. It'll fall on one of the other sides till sometimes it's like a honed down Honed razor between the difference of right and wrong. It's got to be every word of God. I think that's what's being put in our hearts. Now it's grievous to see it go otherwise sometimes. But Lot, listen, he never, he saw the well-watered plains. He was willing to ignore the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah. He never thought that his daughters would get married to men of perverse minds who had other agendas. He never saw that his wife would be turned into a pillar of salt. He never saw that fire would rain down. But he dropped himself into a channel. And I'm saying, there's all kinds of voices and channels right now in the world. And I say, we don't have time. And I say, I say God can help us May God deliver us from the wrong channel. But I say this, I'm, I'm saying this, that we tighten up a little bit. Tighten the armor. And, and don't just walk in by an attraction. But I'll say this, the Bible says pray without ceasing. Pray forevermore. Pray in every little thing. Pray in little decisions about education. Pray about a job. Pray about your friends. Pray about your associates. Pray about the church you go to. Pray about all these things because the hour's late. I believe God can... Listen, at the, at the end of the day, Lot survived because... Not because he was a good guy. The Bible says he went down there and he says, the deeds of that country, they vexed his righteous soul. But Lot was saved because there was an Abraham interceding for him before God. Thank God there's still people interceding. We need to intercede for those that are out there. We need to intercede for our loved ones. We need, I'll tell you what, God's got us here for a purpose. Don't ever give up. Don't ever give up. I am at the opinion as long as there is breath in anybody, I'm not giving up on them. As long as there is still me on the earth and my heart is towards God, I'm not giving up on anybody. Don't let the devil tell you a lie. I believe God's going to bring people in. I believe he's going to bring prodigals in. I believe he's going to bring our children in. I believe he's going to rescue some from the throes of the fire. But it's because we're here. And I say this, don't stop praying. Don't stop interceding. And it's also a warning, like Brother Branham would say in marriage and divorce. He would come down and tell them, now, you that are married and divorced, that was wrong, but God has forgiven you. That wasn't the end of it. He says, 
don't ever do it again. And tell your children and your children's children not to ever do that again. I think we ought to have in every home and in this church and in every meeting, in our prayer meetings, we need to really be coming before the throne of grace. We are living in a dangerous time. You open yourself up. You t- they talk about sympathetic spirits. They said in America, 10 years ago, something like 15%, some are 15 to 30, were sympathetic to homosexuality and mixed mar- and uh, gay marriages. Right now, it's at 70%. The world spirits have poured in. Oh, I thank God I'm in the message. It doesn't come. No, it does. It beats on your door every day. You need to be vigilant. You need to be diligent. Watch what your children are being taught in school. Watch what's on their their iPads or their phones. Watch their, there's agendas at play here. These are spirits. They, they come on nice words and nice thoughts. And Brother Benham would say, demon spirits travel on the titles of Father, Son, Holy Ghost. How much more these perverse things that are around us. I'll tell you, we need to be diligent. We need to also watch ourselves. Ministers, popularity, Women, money, three things. Don't ever watch. That's for every man, actually. Be sold out to one thing, Jesus Christ. If you're going to have an absolute, make your absolute. The Bible, the message. Don't make it just Brother Ed or Brother Harold. I'll be there to do whatever I can to uphold it. But make your Bible. Don't make it just this church. Make your absolute Jesus Christ. Okay, you give me, give me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go till noon, but I'm not going to go beyond. i got seven more minutes. Let me finish the, the thoughts that are really on my heart. Isaiah chapter 3. So, Brother Ed, these things don't bother me. I'll tell you what, if, if you have the feeling, if, if you don't realize the enemy is at the door, he's at every one of our doors. I'll tell you what, if, if you've gotten relaxed enough, I'm saying, tighten up a little bit. Isaiah chapter 3, now I, I'm, I'm not going to read all of this, but Isaiah, a prophet, he says this in verse 16, moreover the Lord said, because the daughters of Zion are haughty, they walk with stretched forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go and make a tinkling with their feet. Now, he, he's seeing things naturally. The Lord will smite a scab on the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. Now, Isaiah goes on to say further, this tinkling is ornaments around their feet, like calls, and round tires like the moon. I was in a restaurant and I watched this woman come, and these earrings were like, and I thought, that's exactly what it says here. And chains, bracelets, mufflers, bonnets, ornaments of the legs, headbands, tablets, earrings. The tablets were mentioned in the Bible. Remember that. (laughs) The rings and nose jewels and changeable suits of apparel and mantles and wimples and crisping pins and glasses and fine linen and hoods and veils. I mean, this is all about adorning themselves we ourselves are also being adorned. And what's in the natural is a reflection of the spiritual. And when I see a leaning towards, look at me, show this, and I'm not just talking about our sisters, I'm talking brothers in your hairstyles, and it becomes, watch, your your, your hairstyle may be legal as far as the outwards, but what spirit is it under? 
And I, I'm saying, what? Be careful what you open up to. You say, I'm just playing around with it. It's nothing. That's what Lot thought. And before long, it was controlling him. And even at the time of judgment, when his wife was told, don't look back, she'd had one too many shopping trips to West Sodom Mall. And she had to look back. Now, pardon the pun, but it's not really edifying going there unless you go after hours when the shops are closed and even then. It's not a place I naturally go to, but for reasons we do. Now, I I won't read the rest of chapter 3, but let's go to chapter 4, verse 1. And in that day, seven women shall take a hold of one man, saying, we'll eat our own bread, we'll wear our own apparel. Look at the attitude of feminism. Oh, I can have my own thing. One of the cultures, Brother Simon and Sister Pramila would know this, but the Indian culture has always had a generational value. Grandparents stayed in a home, parents came in, children stayed. And, and I'm, I'm just designing a home for somebody who's like that, and it's a big home. And, and now the son who's not married has a girlfriend who, who's left her home, and she says, I don't want to be in that home. And it's like, it's causing like this huge eruption in the family. What do you mean? These are values. But this is feminism coming out. I, I'm, I'm saying, you can get mad and upset about those things, But that's also the spirit of the church. Not the bride, the church. Is the bride immune? No, 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 no. It can get on us too. I think we should. I know we should. No. Our, our, as the bride, we are to submit to the bridegroom. And he would say, we will wear, we'll eat our own bread, we'll wear our own apparel, we're going to have our own word, we're going to have our own programs, and we want to be called by our own denominational name. It's not good enough to be identified with William Branham, and, and I'm not ashamed of that, actually. I'm not ashamed of that, that message. and that I, I, I'm actually grateful that, that Elijah has come in this last day. And he says, take away our reproach. Give us these things. Why? Because they had to have their own. Eve never got her own name until she committed an act. Until then, she was known as the woman that came out of the man. And the Bible would say, I, I'll skip verses 2. And say, well, let's, let's read verse 2. In that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious, and the fruit of the earth shall be as excellent and comely for them that are escaped of Israel. And it shall come to pass, he that is left in Zion, and he that remains in Jerusalem shall be called holy, even everyone that is written among the living in Jerusalem. Now, if whenever you refer The Bible refers to Zion in the Old Testament. That refers to the bride. That's a type of the bride. Now, this next verse, I'm not even getting to the conclusion of what I'm getting to today, but this next verse is applicable to every one of us. God's called us. Some, He had to pull us out of the miry clay. Some, He called out of huge complexes, family situations, and, he, and, and some of us have fallen into things, and he has to wash us. And the Bible says, when the Lord shall have washed away the filth, let's be honest, the holy God we serve, some of our conversation has been filth to him. Some of our actions, some of our thoughts, some of our words That would be filth in the eyes of this holy. But God is not just to justify, He's to sanctify us. And He's there to bring us and give us, He says, and it says here, the Lord will wash away the filth of the daughter of Zion and shall have purged the blood of the Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. Let me just bring this down to a quote or two and then I'll close. Brother Branham uses this thought, modern thinking. It's, it's a phrase. Type in those two words with italics, modern thinking. He's, he, he talks in marriage and divorce. He talks about, now I, I'm using the women. I'm not picking on the women. I'm just talking on the spirit of the age. And he says, a man that chooses a bride, would he pick, what kind of a home would he pick? What kind of a girl would he take? 
I'm not too much on this modernistic taste of women working. But it's become commonplace. He says, when I see these women with these uniforms on, riding around in the city, on motorcycles as the police, it's a disgrace to the city. I'll tell you what, if the mayor got a hold of this, I, I would be in big trouble right now. And you and I would be. And if they ask me about it, I'll say, listen, this isn't my idea. This is God's idea. And God sent a prophet to bring me this, uh, his idea. Now, I'm not saying, does it mean a woman never works? No. You're, you work, but when you're displacing your children and your family, you know, if you're doing it and, and you're done all those things, be careful where you work and how you work and how you handle yourself at work. I know it's really quiet, but, but, but listen, I, I'm, I'm here because I believe the message. And, and, and my, I'll say this, some of our sisters do a little part-time work here. Nothing against that. What I'm saying is, this is a natural type, but it also reflects a spiritual. He says, that's the modern thinking. And then Brother Branham says this, and I'm closing with this quote. O oh, woman, pass your modern thinking of dress. Pass your modern thinking before you go on the street, before man. You young women, you old women, before you go on the street with your clothes so tight, pushed out in the front and in the back. You know what does that? High heels. Oh my goodness. Is somebody believe the word of God here this morning? He says, I'm not critical. I'm just saying this. Do you know your body is sacred? Before you enter the street, dressed like that, pass your mind through a thinking woman's filter. I'll deal with the brothers yet, okay? Brothers, you're not immune. I'm, I'm in this too. Brother, before you turn your head to look at her, pass your mind through a thinking man's filter you'll come out with a holy man's taste. And if you pass your mind through a thinking woman's filter, you'll come out with a holy woman's dress. That's right. And brother, with a holy man's look. Oh, wash us, Lord. Wash us. Let the musicians come. Listen, I really wanted to get back to Genesis 17. But I believe there's another part to sanctification, and that's this, the seal of circumcision, the Holy Ghost in us. Before we can get to the Holy Ghost, full obedience, it'll entitle you to that. Listen, I know this is a little pastoral. I hope it didn't, I, I'm saying, I didn't mean to come off hard, but I know I've benefited from hard preaching. I know that I benefit when Brother Branham comes and and he pours his heart out, and you know the Spirit of God's behind there. Amen. And then he comes, and he says, oh, you feel scoured out. Yeah. He said, let's just allow the Holy Spirit to bathe us now. I want to be an old-fashioned Christian. I want to be a real Christian. I want this church to be a real lighthouse. I want it to be where the Spirit of God moves not without the word and dressed any which way. And No, I want it to be because the word is here, the spirit of God loves to come here. Because there are men and women that are sold out to God, not just older ones, but young people. Thank God for our young brothers. Thank God for some of our young sisters, the ones that play here. Thank God for the families we have. I want to see more. Come in. Are you with me? Let's stand together this morning. Thank you for your patience. I don't regret what I said, but I trust it's received the right way. Amen. Thank you. Are you washed by the water of the Word? Are you washed? <laughs> Sorry. The... It's the other one. Are you washed by the water of... No. Washed by the water of the Word. Do you know what it is 
Listen, this is me helping the song leader out here this morning. <laughs> Do you Do know you, what it is? <laughs> Do you know what it is? Not to have one guilty feeling, nor to wonder where you're going when you die. Not condemned of the past, not afraid of what tomorrow holds in store. Know the reason why. you've heard it's no impossible dream you can start over clean when you're washed by the water of the word are you washed by the water washed by the water of the word are you washed And where he's concerned, there never was no sin. For when God looks your way, he no longer sees a sinner, but a saint who's been washed white as snow. Not by anything we've done, but by the blood of God's own Son. Yes, I'm washed by the water. away my sins nothing but the blood of Jesus what can wash away my sins nothing but the blood of Jesus what can make me whole again nothing but the blood Nothing. 
nothing but the blood of Jesus. <coughs> Sometimes we come to the end of a service and it seems like we can get all clammed up and we make a call or something. But I, I, I've watched now some people pass away in the last few <coughs> months or weeks. If time goes on, I'll go that way. If the world goes on, we'll all go that way. But God has promised something. Why would you want to stay and feel guilty? I'm not asking for a show. Wouldn't you want to just be cleansed of a guilty feeling? If you got something that you can't overcome, listen, I'm going to tell you right now, Brother Ed needs the blood of Jesus as much as every one of you. Without the blood, I am nothing. I need it. I need its cleansing power. I need every part of it. Oh, Brother Ed, you've been serving God all day. No, I need it. I have to ask for forgiveness. Brother Glenn, every day is right. You don't have to live beat down by the devil. You don't have to live. You can actually go a little higher. Why would you want to be down here? As the pressure increases, and it will, we're going to go one way or the other. Let's be leaning the right way. We're going to close the service. And we're going to sing pleasing. Let me be pleasing. We have a couple of brothers here. I'm going to ask Brother Philip if you would come and close in prayer for us. Would that be all right? Would that be all right? You come and close after we sing this, okay? Let's just sing this to him. Please.